It's the van that inspired a million road trips. The air-cooled, split-windowed love machine, the hippie highway hopper, the Libyan revenge van. It's one of the most iconic and recognizable vehicles ever made. Did you know this love bus was born out of war? And why in the heck did a US president conspire to kill it? This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Volkswagen this episode is sponsored by Gran Turismo 7, now available on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. I think this means we made it. Hey Jerry, you see this comment? Yo, who's the best driver at Donut? Huh, well obviously it's me. me. <laughs> it's me, Nolan. It's me. Obviously it's me, Nolan. What, you think you're better than me? Oh. I know I am. Well, why don't you prove it, Jerry? Oh, you name the time and the place, Nolan. Nolan, Nolan, Nolan. Gran Turismo 7, PS5, right now. Player one. Jeremiah Burton, 22 years old. If reckon Nolan's wrong, I don't want to be right. Player two. Nolan Sykes, not 22, and I'm about to bring the heat. Going down, Jerry. Stop ramming me, dude. Gran Turismo has always been the real driving simulator, and GT7 is the best one yet. Buy, tune, race your way through the solo campaign, or if you love going head to head with friends, you can compete in the GT Sport mode like us. And thanks to the power of the PS5, you get the most realistic 420 cars and over 90 tracks with dynamic weather conditions and stunning 4K and HDR and 60 FPS. Whether you're playing on a sim setup like us or feeling all the subtle bumps on the road on your DualSense wireless controller, Gran Turismo 7 helps you feel your position on the road like no other racing game. No, 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 no! No! Yes! I told you, Jerry, I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. Rematch tomorrow? I'll be here. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Later, Nolan. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. You might know it as the transporter, or the bus, or the micro bus, or the van again, or the caravel. But it doesn't matter what you call it. If you ask anyone in the world what the most iconic bus or van is, nine times out of 10, they're gonna say the VW bus. And why is that? It's underpowered. It's small for a bus and for a van. You can't even do wheelies. But it is beloved, especially by hippies and van lifers. The VW bus is so synonymous with hippies that when Jerry Garcia died in 1995, Volkswagen honored the Grateful Dead frontman with an ad featuring a VW bus with a tear streaming from one headlight. That is some serious branding. Cars can't cry. That's one of the best things about them. Now I'm getting ahead of myself because even though most people know the VW bus because of the hippies, its story doesn't start there. Oh no. We are gonna turn this bus around and head back in time to post-World War II Germany. In 1947, a Dutch businessman named Ben Pon, owner of Pon's Automobilehandel, became the first dealer outside of Germany to sell Volkswagens. Even though this made Pon super, super rich, his real legacy would be the project that he worked on next. A year earlier in 1946, Pond visited VW's Wolfsburg factory. During his tour, he saw what Volkswagen workers called a Plattenwagen. It's an improvised flatbed parts hauler based on the Beetle chassis that they used to move parts around the factory. Pond took one look oh. at the Plattenwagen mm. and saw Deutschmark signs in his eyes. And then, on April 23rd, 1947, he was inspired to sketch out a very hilariously simple van. I mean, a dog could draw this van. <laughs> now, even though drawing a van doesn't seem like a big deal, it was. 
But this whole van idea was pretty radical. Now, up until that point, moving large groups of people was done by trains, buses, or covered trucks. Large passenger vehicles were almost exclusively failed concept cars, like the Rumpler Tropfenwagen and the Dymaxion car. And neither of those made it to mass production, which is a bummer since Rumpler Tropfenwagen really rolls off the tongue. It's practically poetry. So Pond brought his sketch to the VW execs and they were like, Wunderbar! But the Volkswagen factory was too busy building bugs to do anything else, so it took two more years to finally build their first prototype, the Type 29. VW engineers took the prototype to a wind tunnel at the Technical University of Braunschweig, beautiful language, where they used the wind resistance to come up with two of the bus's trademark features, a split windshield and a V-shaped roof line. Then they took a break to eat some liver sausage and drink big warm beers out of a boot. Those weren't the only distinct design elements though. The Type 2 was also one of the first vehicles with a cab over, something where the driver sits above the front wheels with the engine at the rear. Now placing the driver directly over the wheels improved visibility as well as made more room for passenger space. You would never know it, but the original ultra comfy and roomy bus was the exact same length as a new Volkswagen Golf today. Insane. The only downside, type two was a The original air-cooled 1.1 liter flat four cranked out just 25 horsepower, which meant that it had a top speed of a whopping 55 miles per hour, and it took two and a half weeks to get there. The bus was geared to make the most of that power, but you only can do so much with 25 horses. Ask Nolan, he's a horse girl, he's tried. Volkswagen's board approved the van, now called the Type 2 or Transporter, uh, like Jason Statham. Why not? And the first production model rolled off the assembly line on November 12th, 1949. VW started with one version of the bus called the Combi. Now the name Combi comes from a super long German word. Are we ready? Kombinationskraftwagen. Now that translates to combination vehicle. That means it's both a passenger and cargo vehicle. Now the Combi featured only two side windows and removable seats so you could fit a bunch of shit in it. So much shit you could put in there. Or you could put other stuff like boxes or whatever, but you also put a ton of shit, all the shit you want. Volkswagen marketed its new machine as a more cost-effective Station wagon. That's it, dear. The Volkswagen station wagon. The one that holds about twice as much as the average station wagon. They also released the first panel van, the commercial, for moving even more shit. You thought you were moving a lot of shit before? No, boy. You aren't even beginning to, to scratch the surface of how much shit you can move. Now, this is commercial shit moving, all right? Professional. Production started slow and only about 9,500 Type 2s came sputtering out of Wolfsburg that year. But over time, the incredible flexibility of the bus made it extremely popular. VW introduced a more luxurious version of the Combi called the Microbus in May 1950. And then a 23 window deluxe Microbus, also known as the Samba. Woo. Now we're getting spicy, and now it came out in June 1951. Now this particular model was first marketed as useful for touring the Alps, because you're gonna need a lot of windows to see all them Alps. I drove through the Alps one time, I tell you what, after about three days, I got bored of all the beauty. I was sick of it. It's like, oh, that looks like a castle from Disney. Oh, that look how green that waterfall is. You get bored. Much like Bradley Cooper, the Type 2s were limitless. VW introduced a flatbed pickup truck Type 2 in 1952. You could get it in a single cab and a crew cab. You could get it as a panel van, a double door panel van, a high roof panel van. At the VW factory in Brazil, they made a Type 2 taxi called the Lotusau, which had six front hinge doors in the passenger area and four bench seats. Now I cannot stress this enough. 
there were so many vans! Volkswagen eventually caught wind that outdoor enthusiasts were customizing the microbus to use as a camper. So they called up their buddies at Westfalia, a German company known for building carts and wagons. They started making camper conversion kits. And by 1951, the Westfalia camping van, AKA the Westie, was born. Now this OG camper van featured a special interior and optional pop-up top ideal for getting away from it all. Quick tangent, Westies are basically the reason that the hashtag van life uh, community exists today. Camping has always been popular. I mean, people used to have to do it. It used to just be called being alive. But Westfalia made it 100 times more convenient. I mean, you just throw all your in your van and also your camping stuff, you take it to the next camping spot. Westfalia outfitted VW buses from the early 50s all the way to 2003 with all sorts of layouts and gadgets for the glamping lifestyle. I'm talking sinks, cabinets, fold out beds, fold out tents, curtains, electric hookups, a freaking folding table where you could play strip poker with forest animals. What clothes are they taking off? I don't know. Westfalia never skipped a generation of VW bus and you can still find every generation of Westie roaming around if you look hard enough. Some people even swap the air-cooled engines for Subaru engines, which they pay for with money that they earn playing strip poker <sighs> with forest animals. It's a whole thing. Read about it. Maybe try open a book sometime. Pathetic. Back to the story. In 1967, the original T1 bus was retired after an incredible 18 year production run, ending its life with 54 horsepower, more than double what it started with. The T1 was replaced by the second generation Volkswagen Microbus, AKA the Bay Window or T2. And just like the James Cameron classic, this one was bigger. It ditched the split windshield. It replaced several thousand small windows with larger, longer windows, and it protected Sarah Connor's son from the bad Terminator. Now, even though the Type 2 had six generations, we in America usually think of the T1 or T2 when we picture the VW bus. And that's mainly, I don't say this often, and I will just promise I'll never say it again, but it's mainly thanks to hippies. Pretty much the only thing they've ever done, besides ruin the planet for everybody else. They did that. Hippies found that the VW bus was cheap to maintain and great for transporting large groups of stinky jerks to rallies, protests, and concerts. The microbus became known for wild paint jobs, a symbol of protest against the boring, run-of-the-mill brown and tan sedans of the average American, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, every third blink is slower. The 60s weren't good to you, were they? They were even featured on album covers with counterculture heroes like Bob Dylan or the Beachy Boys. And most importantly, you could bonk in it. Yeah, boy! You can lay all the way on one of these boys. There's a reason that we associate the VW bus with hippies and not disco dogs. After 1971, it became super hard to get one and not because they all got bought by deadheads. It's actually because of an import law that changed the US car market for decades to come. Now in response to European tariffs on American chicken exports, <gasps> President Lyndon B. Johnson introduced the chicken tax, a 25% tax on potato starch, dextrin, brandy, and light trucks from Europe, AKA a fun Saturday night kit, baby. Mm. You might be asking yourself, James, chicken wasn't on this list. Why in the heck wouldn't it be called the chicken tax? Have some fucking patience, okay? I'm gonna tell you. Jeez! This import tax was in retaliation to European taxes on cheap American chicken. This chicken was so cheap, it was messing up their whole economy. That's why I call some cheap chicken. So LBJ's administration uh, claimed that grouping these imports together equaled the amount of sales lost by our down-home American chicken farmers. And just as a note, the chicken tax, 
is still in effect today. When LBJ signed the tax into law, the price of the bus immediately went up by 25%. For a van that's supposed to be cheap, a 25% price increase is basically a death note. Demand plummeted. In just a year, the US imports of automobile trucks from West Germany declined by one third. Volkswagen lost nearly $6 million in US sales. By 1971, the bus had pretty much completely disappeared. That's not the whole story. Audio tapes from the LBJ White House later revealed that he made a handshake deal with the head of the United Auto Workers Union, the same United Auto Workers Union that was threatening to go on strike just before the 1964 election, which would have hurt Johnson's reelection chances. To stop the strike, LBJ secretly offered to put a tariff on Volkswagen imports, which had become so common and so popular that they were nearly single-handedly killing union auto jobs, which can only mean one thing. LBJ, kill the hippie van, man. It's all a conspiracy, man. I mean, think about it, man. JFK, three letters, all right? LBJ, three letters, all right? Now, van, three letters, but only one survived. Man. After the whole chicken tax fiasco, VW bus sales slowed, but they didn't completely dry up. Enthusiasts' interest kept the dream alive, and in 1979, the T3 debutted. This gen is very angular, which fit in with all the wedge cars that define that era. This was the first gen which saw luxuries like power steering and air conditioning. They also ditched the air-cooled engine in 1983 for a more modern, liquid-cooled engine. In 1990, VW debutted the T4, which was way more mainstream than any of the previous generations in terms of its styling and mechanics. It was the first front-engine bus, ending a 40-year run of rear-engine configurations. The styling was more conventional than any other generation, taking fashion tips from the up-and-coming minivan market that was taking America by storm. I actually really want one of these. It looks like a murder van. And you could get it with a VR6, which is a beautiful 2.8 liter narrow angle V6. Revolutionary motor, I love it. And also at 10 times the amount of power that the original bus made. T5 and T6 are basically just vans, dude. <laughs> uh, um, we don't need to spend that much time on them. They're cool, it's a Volkswagen van. Um, but it's a van. These days, bus collectors classify the Type 2s by generation and by the number of windows that they have. Standard models are equipped with <coughs> only 11 windows. Deluxe versions have 15 windows and the Samba has 23. The more windows you got, the more valuable your bus is. That's just bus math, baby. I didn't make it up. And like I mentioned before, the bus is a cult hit among off-roaders for many of the same reasons people love Volkswagen dune buggies. They offer a great view, simple mechanics, and high ground clearance. The bus has even inspired events like the Shasta Snow Trip, a crawl from the bottom of Mendocino National Forest to the city of Mount Shasta over some of California's gnarliest dirt roads. Now, sadly, in 2013, Volkswagen announced that its Brazilian factory would stop producing a van fashioned after the original Combi, ending 78 consecutive years of rear-engine Volkswagen vehicles. Luckily for you van heads out there, uh, after years of teasing us with concepts, Volkswagen is bringing the bus back in electric form later on this year. Time will tell uh, whether it has the charge to electrify generations of bus heads. Jeremiah, quit being a tool. Go get yourself our new tool shirt at donutmedia.com. That's right, we came out with our all new tools shirt. It's made out of 100% cotton, so it's the perfect shirt to wear while you work on your car or to give to that one friend who forgets the name of that one tool. Maybe it'll help you get that project car up and running that you've been planning on working on. Yeah, yeah. the problem is that I can't remember what pliers are called. <laughs> <laughs> This is probably, possibly my favorite shirt we've ever made. First off, I love the color purple and it looks sick against this gray. And it's like a cheat sheet. If you're in like automotive school, have the person that sits in front of you wear this shirt and you'll get everything right on the test. Donutmedia.com, get you one today. Trust me, best shirt ever. Mm -hmm. So soft. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut Media. If you aren't already subscribed, hit that button. 
Uh, we're nice around here. It's a good little community. Hit that like button too. Uh, if you liked it, uh, let us know. It really helps us out uh, to get the video fed to more people. I'm really excited about our merch program right now. We're dropping new stuff every week. It's very cool. We have a cool designer. His name is Andy. Uh, go to donamina.com to check that out. Thank you, Nick, for shooting this. Thank you, Gio, for directing it. I love you.